Hi, it's me again, Kinkas, and I'm a Synth DIY guy. Today we're doing number two of the four Rebel Technology Back in Black series of Euclidean modules. So yesterday we looked at Stoichea, which is a dual Euclidean sequencer, which is very hands-on. You pretty much play it using the knobs and the switches on it. And uh, this is the patch that we got from it. There you go, yeah. So we saw Stoichea yesterday, and today we're moving on to Clasmata, right? So let's just uh, turn this off for a second and patch the Clasmata. Clasmata is similar to Stoichea. It's a Euclidean rhythm generator as well, and uh, we've already talked about what Euclidean rhythms are twice in this channel. So just go and watch my Euclidean Circles module uh, review or the Stoichea review that I uploaded yesterday and the Clasmata has the same parameters but just on one channel right so it has the offset which will just shift your pattern by steps relative to whatever your clock is or whatever your other voices are doing uh, this second knob over here is the length right and this module goes up to 32 okay so in the middle you have 16 which is half of 32 steps Stoichea only goes up to 16 Right, and then here is the fill. This is how many of the steps will be, uh, will have on gates, right? Will trigger uh, voices. So right now, as you can hear, our kick drum is not continuous, right? It's a pattern that's been generated by that algorithm, which is bas basically a calculation between the length in steps and the fill value. Right, and uh, we can maybe have the hi hat be a little bit more, more frequent. And maybe change the length a little bit so it's polymetric against the. Uh, there we go. Against the kick, it's a little more interesting. So let's create a third voice. How are we going to do that? Let's see. I still have a Generate 3 here, and we still have VCAs, we still have envelopes on Ornament and Crime, so we should be fine. First, we're gonna take our clock, which is the rise over here of the Contour 1, and it's going into my multi here. So I'm gonna take the last hole out of my mult, and we're gonna put it in up here. No, that's actually the reset input. Yep, I can see the, the LEDs light up. As I turn up the uh, pulse width on contour one here, you will also see the LEDs light up more. And this pulse width, by the way, is uh, passed on to the output. So not only does this generate equal rhythms, but you can also modulate the pulse width of your clock and have that affect the length of the triggers. Right? We might do this in this demo. Okay, so let's turn this off again. And uh, let's just create this uh, a new voice. What is it gonna be? Uh, I'm gonna take the full output of Generate 3, my second Generate 3 module here, put it in audio rate, and we're gonna send that to a channel of Morph 4 over here, which is the acting as a quad VCA right now. And we'll take the output to a channel of the mixer. Now we're also going we're gonna use the output from Clasmata, which is the red jack here. I'm gonna send that to trigger another of my envelope generators on Ornament and Crime. And we'll take the output, C output. And that's gonna control our second VCA here. So let's turn down the other the first two voices and turn on the, and here we go. Already we have a pattern happening here. All right, full fill. Here's less fill. Now I can also use the envelope generator output for not just the VCA here, but also the pitch 
of the oscillator. Right. So. We're going to shape the wave a little bit here. That's okay, this is pretty recognizable already compared to the other two voices, right? This is our kick. Here's our snare. Alright, and just like the Stoichia, I can do all of my programming manually if I want to. There's also an off position, so it's like a mute. And there's the middle position. And then there's the alternate, alternated position. So it basically splits the clock in half, pretty much. Right? So here's the normal position, alternated position, and off. All right, we're going to put it in the, uh, the main position, which is the center position. Now, what differentiates the Klasmata from Stoichi, apart from being just a single channel and having a longer length parameter, is the fact that you have volt control, voltage control of two of the Euclidean generator parameters. So, the length and the fill, not the offset, right? The offset is only manual, but you have control over the length and fill. So, here's what I'm going to do. First, I'm going to make the pattern a little more predictable with the first two so that they work as a, a solid reference from which to hear the other one. Right, so this is just repetitive now. Four on the floor and 16 note subdivision on the hats. Right, so this is solid. Now I can turn on Plasmata, and we're hearing that little tom kind of a sound um, very differently now. Why don't we send some pitch control from the sequencer to generate three here. And you know what? I can make that decay a little slower as well. And turn it up. Why don't I send some audio level modulation from the mental output here into FM input? That'll be more interesting. There we go. I like that. It's kind of like a snareish function, right? So we have a pseudo hi hat, a pseudo snare, and a pseudo kick. Need a little more kick. There you go. Nice. I think I want my hi-hats to be even shorter. There you go. Yeah, hi-hats the orbit 3 in audio rate. It's chaotic oscillator. The kick drum is the generate three, the first one, with uh, pitch envelope modulation. It's going through filter eight, but it doesn't really need to. So actually what I can do is send the output of the mixer straight to the VCA here. What did I just do? There you go. Now send that directly. Cool. So now we have filter eight free to use as a modulation source, which will be fun. I'm gonna put it in low with resonance all the way up, and now it's a octature LFO module. So that's we're going to use that to modulate the parameters of Klasmata. So let's find a predictable pattern on Klasmata now. I think I need it to be just 32 bars there. Don't. 
That's kind of predictable. Now let's send some modulation. This is what's gonna be fun. We're gonna send an LFO to the length parameter. Very cool. So now it's like improvising, right? Especially because the filtrate LFO is not in any way synchronized to the clock so it becomes a chaotic sort of improvised variation on the algorithm now let's take the opposing LFO from the filter 8 so this one is the inverted phase right polarity rather we're gonna put that in the field input Now it became kind of predictable because those are related. What if I use instead an output of the orbit 3, which is generating the chaos? Yeah, that's more interesting. More varied, right? Super cool. Make this a little more quirky. If I, instead of the orbit 3, I use the sequencer output. So that's, uh, that's here, I think, right? Yep, that's the star right here. That's a lot, a lot of things. I also have a contour 1 here that I can put in loop sort of slowly, and this will be a disjointed, unrelated LFO to the filter 8. So that can be cool. Let's get the output there. Let's make it super slow. And again, this is modulating the fill parameter. Maybe I can turn fill parameter down, so we can, since this modulation is positive only. how it starts getting more active as the uh, control one goes high and then as it starts going low less active and it's taking a while to do that because it's a super slow modulation right now Let's make it a little faster length parameter. Let's turn that in the middle here so it'll make more use of the filter rate. Let's make the filter rate slower as well. Cool. And I can manually change the offset here. And you can put it in alternated mode. I kind of like alternate mode here. And you do have the reset input just like uh, Stoichia. So just like on Stoichia, I'm going to use the outputs of my step 8 sequencer from General Analog to reset the Clasmata. However, you won't always repeat, right? Because I'm still modulating those two parameters. 
So it'll be kind of much more repetitive, but you still get variation. Let me take eight steps here. And there are attenuate verters or attenuators. I think there are attenuators actually for these two CV inputs as well. So you can really dial in the right amount of modulation that you need. off the reset and let it just roam free now if you were hanging out with us yesterday you saw us go drive the stoichia into audio rates so maybe we can do that to the class model as well First, I'm going to just make the decays really short because this, this part really works better if the decays are super short. There you go. Turn up some pitches too. There you go. That kind of snare thing. Here's that kick. Kick. And now I'm going to swap the switch, the uh, contour one that's acting as a clock. I'm going to switch that to audio rate now and start playing with really fast speeds. Hold on. Instead of using these the outputs to trigger envelopes, we instead we use these as the sources of audio. So I'm going to just send them to the mixer here directly. That will be kind of a drone. There we go. So these are the outputs straight out of Klasmata and Stoichia. Right? Uh, here with the Contour 1, if I have the uh, rise fast, I have a shorter pulse width, right? So the triggers are shorter. If I make it longer, see? You get that pulse width. It, it is reflected on the outputs, the pulse width of the clock. Cool. Right. So here's the first one, here's the second one, and here's the third one. And that's Klasmata over here. Can make it more radical. We can also use the sequencer to modulate the rate of contour 1, and that's going to be more interesting. We can also clock the step 8 with the second contour 1 that's slow, and that'll be more interesting yet. Let's turn on the other, the two channels of Stoichia. Cool. Yeah, so we get into noise making territory, wave shaping, and other more experimental craziness. put this one in audio rate well then you just have a a mess complete mess here cool so yeah that's it for class mana there's not too much more to say about it since it's basically a single channel stoichia with some CV control, which the chair doesn't have. So, 
that's it for today. Stay tuned for tomorrow's module. It's going to be either Loggy or this one that I still don't know how to pronounce. I have to look it up, hear how Martin pronounces it. So now let's build the module. All right, let's build this thing. In the kit, you get everything all separated in little bags. The panel and the PCB, the manual. And yeah, I always have the manual up near me and clearly visible so I can follow the instructions. And then I organize my parts on my bench and start with the resistors and diodes, which are the flattest components. I follow the order that's on the manual. I always check with the multimeter the value of my resistors to make sure that they're correct. And I place them all at once without ever turning the board around because I will actually solder these parts from the top. A lot of people ask me why I do that and it's something I learned from Ray Wilson and it's just cleaner, quicker, easier for me. Since these boards are all professionally made and have pleated through holes, if you solder from above, the solder makes it through to the bottom anyway, and you don't have to deal with a forest of leads and having to turn the board around all the time, spreading resistor legs out or any of that. You just solder them up, just like that. And then when you turn it around, only once, you can just trim all of the resistor legs once and then touch up the work from the bottom just to make sure it looks good. It's an added step but it's minimal compared to the advantages. So the next flattest component are the IC sockets. Right? So just put them on, carefully turn the board around so they don't fall off and then secure them by soldering opposing corner pins first, then you can solder everything else. That's the crystal for the microcontroller. Now some ceramic capacitors, just a few. This is the regulator, voltage regulator, and some transistors. Make sure the flat part of the transistor matches the flat part of the drawing on the silk screen. Now some electrolytic capacitors, those are polarized, make sure they, they're oriented correctly. And solder these up. These you do solder from behind, there's no easy way to reach the pad from the top. Clip the leads. And that's it for the electronics. It's a simple board. Most of the work is being done by the microcontroller, so there aren't that many components. So now organize all of the hardware parts and we can start with the power connector. Start with just the corner, make sure it's straight and then continue soldering. It is now let's place the jacks and switches and pots you might need to straighten out the pot legs a little bit in case they don't quite fit by just pushing them in all right make sure the LEDs are correctly oriented as you plug them in Right, the longer leg is positive, it's the anode. Right, and uh, one important step here, make sure you put one nut over each potentiometer before placing the panel on. This is important so that the height of the pots lines up with the switch. Right, go ahead and place that microcontroller in there. The notch goes outward from the PCB, make sure it's oriented correctly, the other IC as well, and you can now slip the panel on carefully and tighten the nuts, fasten it on before soldering. 
I like using these little handy tools to help tighten it without scratching the panel. There it goes. The red banner nut represents the output and all the other are inputs so all the others are black. Get this little bifaco tool. They usually come with the kit. I have a whole bunch of these. And finish tightening everything up. Now you can turn it around to solder. Just use your finger to guide the LED and then open up the legs to keep it in where you want it. And then solder them up. The LEDs, jacks, the switch, and the pots. Let's trim those leads, the LED leads, and that's it. Now, the knobs that go in this build are really tight. They look great, but they're really tight. So just make sure you use some needle nose pliers and squeeze those tips. See, I just figured that out. Squeeze the pot shafts to make them like skinnier, pointier. And that'll help squeezing in. There you go. Once they're on there, they're on there. <laughs> All right, so that's it. Time to check the power header for shorts, test, and uh, let's welcome a special guest. Nina wants to say hi. There she is. Did you want to say anything to my viewers? Mm -hmm. Do you like synthesizers? Yes. My 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 synthesizer name is Nina is Nina DIY girl. Nina DIY girl. I love that. That's it for today. I hope you liked the module, the video, the channel, me, and uh, if you're so inclined, please join our Patreon. Please hit like, subscribe, hit the bell, you know all that stuff. Just make sure you don't miss out on future material. There's going to be a lot of cool stuff coming out in the channel. Lots of cool gear to review. And that's it. See you soon and stay noisy.